At some point, all tenants move out. That's why it's very important that you learn how to record refunding money to tenants. If you have any questions about this topic, you can leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to help you. And of course, if you feel the video helped you, I hope you will click like and don't forget to subscribe to get updates on new videos that come out all the time. There's good news with this topic. It's very simple to refund money to a tenant who is moving out. First, just write a check in the same way that we learned. Make sure you include the tenant as both the payee in the top field as well as the job in the field in the bottom right of the check window. The account in the lower left field will be the unearned rent account when giving back normal rent and the account in the lower left field will instead be security deposits payable when giving back the security deposit. The bad news is that you have to write a separate check if you are refunding both unearned rent and security deposit payable. So for example, let's imagine on April 7th, Gary Greenstein gets sick of Holden and moves out. He will not be charged for the week that he stayed. We owe him $800 in unearned rent and another separate $800 in security deposit payable. We gave him check number five specifically for the unearned rent and we gave him check number six sp specifically for the security deposit payable. So let's take a look at how we would record this in QuickBooks. First let's take a look at the report, specifically the tenant balance detail. Now we'll scroll down to Gary Greenstein and you can see that this report shows only an $800 balance. That's because the tenant balance detail report shows only the rent and is not affected by the security deposits that we track separately. So let's also take a look at the trial balance and see right now before we pay him the $800 cash is $20,650 it's going to go down to 19,000 something when we give him back $800 for his unearned rent. And of course, unearned rent will decrease to 7,500 for the $800 that we're giving back because it will no longer be an unearned rent, we're giving it back to him. Here's how we write the check. We click the plus sign and we go over to the vendor column and we click check, just like we learned before. Now the date is April 7th of 2019. We have to put Gary both in the top left field where it says payee as well as the bottom right field where it says customer. That's the only way refund checks will work properly. In the bottom, in the bottom left you have to click the pull down category to find the account and in this case the proper account is unearned rent uh, unearned rental income this one unearned rental income this is the one that went up when we put the money in the account so when we take the money out of the account to give it back this is the one that goes down now all you have to do is put the amount and in this case the amount of unearned rent without a deposit is 800 so we push the tab key see we click here push the tab key it saves the field now when I click save and close, the trial balance numbers are exactly as what we predicted. Cash and bank went down to 19850 and unearned rental income decreased by the $800 that we just gave back to Gary. Now let's click reports and click tenant balance detail and you can see that henceforth and from now on, Gary Greenstein will have a zero balance because we gave him back his rent. Now let's give him check number six for the security deposit and see what happens. So we come back here to check. Okay, 
well, we're off a little bit with the check number, but don't worry. We're giving the money to Gary Greenstein. And we're going to put him both in the top left as the payee, as well as the bottom right for the customer. The date is still the date he's moving out, April 7th. But this time, in fact, QuickBooks even remembers the amount. But this time, we're not giving him back rent. We're giving him back the security deposit payable. The security deposit payable. Now, when we click Save and Close, we can click Reports and open up the trial balance. And you can see security deposits payable, the general number, has decreased down to 900. Let's take a look. Double click. And you can see it's down because we paid Gary. We could make this column a little bigger, a little wider by clicking and dragging. It's down by 800 because of Gary Greenstein, because we paid him back check number seven on April 7th. You could also confirm that this has nothing to do with the tenant balance detail, and that in the tenant balance detail, Gary Greenstein's balance is still zero. Now. You can double check the security deposit account by opening it up from the trial balance, which is what we did, and then we can filter by customer tenant. That's if you feel that you want to know a partial amount or how that security deposit might have been used or distributed. Let me show you. Click the uh, reports and go to trial balance. Now here's the security deposit report. And once you have a lot of tenants moving in and a lot of tenants moving out, this will be a very long list. And it might be a long time between the day you get the security deposit from the tenant and the day you pay it back. So you want to make sure there's an equal amount in the security deposit account. So what you would do is you would click Customize, and then you would click Filter, and you would filter by customer. You would specifically choose... Gary Greenstein. Uh, where is this guy? Okay, uh, Peyton Place. Gary Greenstein. Now when I run the report, I'm seeing the same account. You see this? I'm seeing security deposits payable from the chart of accounts, but I'm seeing only transactions in security deposits that relate to Gary Greenstein. And this would help you double check that the amount of the security deposit that the specific tenant put in to this general payable account is equal to the amount we gave him back when he moved out.